Hi Travelers, Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot, and I'm coming to you today with a general reading for Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading and the messages will not resonate with everyone, in which case please check back to your Moon and Rising sign. There might be messages there for you. Um, I'm going to tell you what I've been seeing in the cards and <clears throat> What I'm the theme that's coming up are changes in relationships. Um, <clears throat> right now, to me, there's a very, very harmonious energy going on. We just had Jupiter move into Libra, and Libra is uh, all about beauty and love. It's ruled by Venus, beauty and love and relationships, harmony and balance. It is known traditionally in astrology as the house of marriage or partnership. So if this is not uh, so, if it's not about a romantic uh, partnership, this could be partnership and work. However, um, but the thing about Libra is it's it's the surface of the relationship. It's the outside appearance of the relationship. The real work of the relationship is done in the eighth house. It is the house of sex, uh, taxes, alimony, child support payments shared property, shared resources, um, how you divide up chores, uh, responsibilities, things of that nature. And so I think there are some changes going on uh, for people um, in, in relationships. And that's really the thing that I've been seeing throughout the readings. Uh, some of the readings I haven't really understood what was going on. Please don't email me explaining it to me because I don't need to know. I just, you know, feel funny when I don't understand what I'm saying. Um, I do recognize that I don't have to know what it is that I'm saying because the message isn't for me. So, um, for those of you who may be interested in purchasing a personal reading from me, um, you can always click on the little white eye in the right hand corner of the video that will take you over to the website. Um, I do ask before you go directly to the booking page, like some people like to do, please read the tab, go to the tab that says important information on booking. Please read that because it will tell you everything that you need to know in order to book the reading and how the process works. Save us both a lot of time. Um, I'm not going to be able to tell you uh, any information about this reading as it pertains to your personal situation for some people it will be spot on for others some of it will be true for some of you none of it will be true um, in which case as I say please check back to your moon and rising sign there could be some messages there for you but in order for me to give you any kind of clarity or insight into your situation it requires a personal reading and what I do is I take your birth date and your sun sign and the questions that you have for the tarot and I meditate on the cards and then I can lay a spread and give you some more clarity as it pertains to your personal situation. Now, I did some pre-shuffling of the cards and I had two cards just fly out of the deck. It is the Emperor and the Knight of Wands. And I was staring at these two cards and what I'm getting um, is that for some of you, and if this has not already occurred, it will be perhaps some of the energies that are playing coming out into October that some of you have had a decision that you've had to make. Um, one that was rather weighty. And I feel that some of you have acted impulsively in some way, shape or form. Um, if this is not you Leo's, then this is someone who has returned quite suddenly. Um, And in a sense, it's kind of like, I say that because the eyes of the emperor, he kind of gets side eye and back to the past. His eyes are going back this way, even though he's facing me. I'll show you the card. Okay. And I have this knight of wands. So typically I see the knights as an event. So this is something that if not a person, uh, then it is a... Uh, an event, something that has occurred, but it is something having to do with the past. As I say, again, if this has not occurred for you, 
perhaps it will be coming up. And it reads sort of like two situations, either someone or something returning quite suddenly from the past, or it is a decision uh, regarding the past that you have made very impulsively. Um, that's that fire energy. So let's lay the rest of the cards and see what um, they have to say. Nine cards down. The rest of the cards, we have this page of swords. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was saying. It's, it's either someone returning or news coming back or some type of decision that needs to be made or has already been made, but that has been done so impulsively. Yeah, I see the, I see the uh, two knights here. One right underneath the other. One speaks to doing something quite quickly or suddenly, impulsively. And then the, the knight, um, of swords has come in and I, and I feel that this is a reaction, a delayed reaction to something. I have two pages opposite each other with an ace of cups underneath the deck. Um, now the knight of swords represents an air sign. So I have uh, one, two, three swords, one cup in the actual reading itself, two representing fire, two representing water, and one representing earth. Come around this way. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Again, I'm getting the message that this is something that happened quite suddenly and unexpectedly. Um, and right now, the outcome of the situation is unknown. Okay. Um, I have one, two, three, major, four major arcana in the, in the spread. And they hold more weight than the pip cards. Now, I have one, two, three, four four court cards. So either this decision or this event uh, involves a lot of people or it is simply the energy of uh, surrounding the situation. I'm not exactly sure because these are two different temperaments. However, they are complementary to each other. Air and fire are complementary to each other. Uh, Fire needs the um, air to continue to burn. Um, but it could also smother a fire if it's removed. The death card. Um, what I'm looking at is some kind of offer. Two offers or two messages coming in um, here. I have these three court cards. And it speaks to immature energy, new energy, but something that's immature and rather reckless. Um, both the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords can be acting before really thinking, speaking before thinking, um, making a quick decision before um, really understanding all of the nuances of a situation. Um, But it also speaks to neighborhoods and communities. So I'm not exactly sure if this is a familial situation. Um, and I say that because the emperor also represents, he's the archetype of the father in the tarot. And so these, uh, this could be representative of two younger children and two teenage kids or somewhat near grown in their 20s. Um, I have the two fours here, and that speaks to some kind of um, not really a stability, 
but more of a stagnation. This emperor in the past had a decision to make and he took some time out to really think about it and perhaps he sent out a message and the message was quite unexpected as if I say it was done recklessly and impulsively and the reply that came back was one that was completely unexpected sent recklessly and impulsively. So now in the center and the present what we have is taking a time out but something comes along uh, something happens to come along and move this situation and we see with the Hierophant that <clears throat> um, it it's going to be a very very important decision whatever this thing is it's, it's something that's very very important almost like the cards are saying to me it has to be done um, uh, because it's the right thing to do. That's what the Hierophant is telling me. He's been coming out in almost every single card. And I believe the reason why the, um, sorry, in every single spread, I believe the reason why the Hierophant is coming out is because he represents Taurus and Taurus rules the second house. Remember I was talking to you about the seventh house of partnership, the eighth house of what the real marriage is all about. And the eighth house is all about those things that you share with, uh, with 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 your partner. Well, the hierophant is about those things you have for yourself, okay? And in a sense, it's like the emperor over to the hierophant to the page has sent out a message saying, "Okay, well, look, I I'm going to go ahead and do this particular thing, but know that it's not really for you. I'm doing it for me." Um, <clears throat> I'm going to hand you an offer, but I think it was done without really thinking about it. You see, there are two keys at the base of the Hierophant, and that says that there's some knowledge that's still locked up. So I think that if you've been waiting on some kind of news, if you've been waiting on some kind of message, if you've been waiting on more information, it will be coming and it might be around this weekend. Uh, or uh, this is the, I think the 30th of September, we have a new moon, but it could also take a full month for this to play out. And while we are waiting um, on whatever this news or information is that's coming. As we can see, these are both of these nights are everybody's faced in the same direction with these court cards. Everybody's looking back to the past. And the Hierophant, not only in terms of Taurus, what he represents is the house of self and self-possessions, but he speaks to organizations, hierarchical structures, uh, universities, military, um, marriages, um, corporations, large corporations, any place that they're and to me these two individuals speak to leaders. Um, and in a sense this kind of reads like it's some kind of back and forth argument, a tit for tat. One person is doing it out of anger and strength the other person is more cool and rational, okay, um, but is still able to come in and deliver their blows. Um, you know, you need fire to temper the steel of the um, of the swords, the metal of the swords, okay, and. Maybe this offer is a, a, like a peace treaty. It's like a truce. It's like calling a truce because as we can see, we have the Page of Cups, the Death card, and the Moon. So maybe some kind of peace offering has been made and it's designed to bring an ending about this, but we don't see that yet. Um, we are moving to the Ace of Cups. That is a renewal. It is a refresher. It is an opportunity to start new, to start fresh. It is an opportunity to purge uh, whatever has been in this cup. You see the Dove of Peace show up. Um, 
again, there's the offer, the wafer going into the cup. Um, we have underneath this the yod, the, what look like uh, leaves, and the yod is the finger of God, and it's pointing to pointing the pointing the way uh, until it's a faded thing, and it's pointing the way, saying that this piece and this offering is what should be done, and once it's done, it should be done. That's what I'm getting. Um, And it's all of a sudden, like after all of this fighting and hullabaloo going on, we, we take a time out and then suddenly it's back on again. It's, it's back on again. You know, and if this is a situation where you feel that you've been wrong, then the Hierophant says, you know, well, do the right thing. Do what you feel is the right thing. Access your higher self and determine what the higher thing is. You know, but it's it's saying that the higher thing is to make a peace offering here. And that it may be a way you see, look, that's the house of that's the eighth house, that's Scorpio. So this could literally be about dividing up assets. This could be the breakup of a company, of a business, of some kind of business partnership. It could also be the breakup of a marriage. Um And sometimes the moon can be about uh, the fear of letting go of something. And the emperor can be someone very difficult to deal with. Uh, he, he can be in his negative aspects. He can be all about the control and not wanting to let go, not wanting to lose face. The Hierophant in his negative aspects can be all about someone who has a set idea. They're dogmatic about it and you cannot argue with them. So this offer, the reason perhaps why there's all of this fighting and we don't see really, we don't know how the outcome is going to be is because um, it's like the offer, the peace offering that's being made is one in a condescending kind of a way. There's something else attached to it. Um, in a way, it kind of reads like some kind of concession, but that the concession is really not fair. But yet, in the end, um, in order to just allow this to pass away so that you can move into a new space, you're going to have to accept the concession. Um, we know that death is not fair. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people, they say, you know, they were taken before their time. But the truth of the matter is, no, they weren't. Um, yes, we are sad that they left us too soon. Okay, but when death comes, death comes. And you can't, you know, um, you can't run away from it. You can't escape it. And this is really about not accepting, I think, an offer, trying to you see the page has its back to death. Like, no, I don't accept that. And the reason why it's not being accepted is because there's something that you fear about the ending of it. as if you don't feel that it is fair and equitable. I don't know where that's coming from, but that's those are the words that came to mind. Um, because there's a lot of different energies here. I don't even know where to begin to look. Why don't we just start in the center and look at the Knight of Swords? This is an event, something that occurs like the fighting starts up again or the arguing starts up again or the somebody crossed the line again. You know, I thought this shit was over and done with, but okay, if that's the way you want to do it, let's go. Um, <laughs> um, 
because somebody feels they have to stand up for what the right thing is. But there's something else going on here. Um, and there's a lot of movement down the center. As if, if this is a group of people, because I have the two, um, remember I said there's a lot of people in this. So if this is, the two people are perhaps in agreement with the way something should be going. And one person is like, hell no. And they will slay everybody in their way to get their way. That's that emperor energy. So the emperor comes in and says, okay, well, look, this, I've thought about it. This is the way we're going to do it. But nobody's happy with that. And sometimes the moon can speak to the answer is unknown at this time. But I do feel with this last row vertical column here of the future, there is some kind of communications that is going to be coming um, that perhaps you're going to have to, the secret knowledge, the key, There's something that needs to be unlocked with the message and perhaps you, you're not able to do that or you don't see it. But it's kind of like the cards are saying, even if that's the case, if you just accept it, you can move on. Sometimes you have to take a loss. You know, is it, wh what are you really fighting for? Sometimes a crap is worth more headache than, you know, it's more headache than what it's worth now. This is odd. So I don't know if this is a work situation or if it's uh, some it's some type of partnership. Let me put it this way. And as we can see, there, in a sense, has always been uh, a constancy of feeling. Okay, a constancy of. Um, but this also speaks to somebody. This is the shy woman who doesn't necessarily show her feelings or say what so maybe this is perhaps somebody who has <clears throat> if they've been in a relationship with an emperor type of individual has for a very very long time not spoken up for themselves see there's a tower and this is what has this is what's coming to a head this is what the knight of swords it's all about okay the time is over for that now remember like i said the hierophant said you know what just go on and do what you got to do um, because this is a feminine energy, the moon. Um, but man, there are lots of people involved in this. If it's not people, then it's just a, it's energy surrounding more than two people. I do feel in one respect that it's children in some regards or somebody who who you feel a responsibility towards someone younger than yourself. Let's take a look and see what the four of swords, there was a break, there was a timeout, a pause from the fighting. I think while uh, people tried to regather themselves, um, we have love, anxiety, tears, and the kaza. Um, I think it was a timeout um, from the fighting, a quiet period. And maybe this was the Mercury during retrograde phase. Um, but now the battle is back on. <laughs> wow. Let's see. Let's take a look at the moon. What is the moon trying to tell us? And if this is the end, it, you know, it could be the end within a month. It could be an ending over this new moon phase that's coming in. It could run all the way out to the full moon, the middle of the month. It could be all the way into November uh, that this plays out.
I think no matter what the situation is, I feel that it's gone on long enough. And now we're, the hope is that we can move forward through this. Um, because ultimately there is a new beginning. There is a healing that is trying to take place, but I think it's just a bunch of um, egos, a, a bunch of attachments to things. Because see, you know, if this is the house of, if he represents marriages and he represents possessions, self-possessions, and this is about um, um, the resources that you share and this coming to an end, this could literally be about, um, <clears throat> yeah, people trying to, to divide up things, trying to, again, fair and equitable keeps coming to mind. I keep that phrase keeps coming. There's something that one person is saying it's fair and equitable. The other person is saying, no, it's not fair and equitable. And in a sense, they're both right. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the message that in a sense, they're both right. The person who's saying it's fair and equitable. Okay. Um, is trying to convince the other person that it is. The other person says, no, that shit's not right. It's not fair and equitable, but it's also the reverse. It's like both people are being kind of selfish about something and they're kind of missing the higher picture. Like, you know what? It, it, sometimes it can be you have to give up some things. You have to sacrifice some things. Um, because death is really the absence of attachment. You know, that's what it is. You're no longer attached to anything, not even the plane on which you used to exist. So it could be about literally giving up some attachments to some personal things or things that you really feel are yours. Um, particularly if there are kids involved, you know, you want to, um, cause I mean, crap, it's, it's just, it's just shit. You know, it's just shit. It's things. And you can always accrue more things, you know? And sometimes when you lighten your load, you realize you really can't survive without some of those things. I mean, what's more, uh, important peace of mind or dragging around all your things and being bitter and angry. So there you have it. I hope that message helped for you, Leos. And until next time, namaste.